Hello and welcome to this live pronunciation class with English Like a Native. My name is Anna and as this is a live broadcast, I can't always guarantee that things will run smoothly. So you'll have to be patient with me. This session will last around 30 minutes. So if you have any burning pronunciation questions, then please write it in the comments box. Now, as the class fills up and there's more and more of you, the comments might start moving quite fast and I may not be able to answer all of your questions. But if you really want your comments to stand out and you like what I do, then you can feel free to use the super chat function. The super chat function is the little dollar sign in the chat where you write section and you can choose to make a small donation um, and that will make your comment flash up for everyone to see and then I can make sure I answer you and give you my full gratitude. Of course this class is absolutely free so do feel free to put your your questions in the box and I will try my very best to give you a standard British English pronunciation or help you with that. Okay, so I'm getting some students into the class. Hello students, who do I have? I have, hey, it's me, Rule. Uh, hello, I've got um, Charmy, hello, I've got May, Nini, I've got Hippolyto, Benjamin, Hassan, Yuya, Bob, Lucas, Philippe. Hello everyone. So just for your information, in future, I will try to do this class at 12.30 every Monday. Besides the pronunciation class, I'm also going to attempt to run a class every Wednesday, and that will be for new vocabulary, and then every Friday, and that will be a themed session where you can have your writing corrected. So obviously you're always listening to me, so it's a good chance for your English listening to learn some pronunciation, but Friday's class will be for your writing skills as well. Although this Friday I can't make it because I'll be at the YouTube studio making lots of wonderful films for you. Okay, so who else do I have? I have Nicholas, um, Didrik, Didrik, hello from Norway, hello. Um, Elena, hello, <clears throat> excuse me, Thomas, hello. Charming, hi. I'm very well, thank you. It's a very grey day here in the UK, and that all rhymes. A grey day in the UK. It's raining and it's cold, which is why I have my standard cup of tea, cup of English tea with milk. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? So... <clears throat> Looking back at some of the previous questions that I've had, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to tell you now, FOMO means fear of missing out, fear of missing out. And this literally is the fear of missing out on something exciting. For example, I might be the kind of person who always likes to be involved in social activities. If there's something happening, I want to be involved. Therefore, I might make sure that I 
always go to the pub on Friday. I go to every event in case it happens to be a good event because I have a fear of missing out on something exciting. So if you have FOMO, you're somebody who doesn't want to miss out on something exciting. Okay, some people are saying they can't hear. Mm. Let me see if there's anything I can do about that. Um. Now, let me know. Is there anybody else out there who can't hear me? Just let me know if you can hear me now. Okay, so some, some people are saying they can hear. Okay, good. All right, I'll use no headphones. Maybe it's the headphones that are, are doing it. Okay, good. Great, I will carry on. So FOMO is the fear of missing out, and we say FOMO. I might get FOMO, I might have FOMO, I have FOMO. But usually we use it in writing. Okay, so then... is silent. So just so you can see me saying this, we have comb, and it's an M, comb, and then we have climb, no B, and then if you can't feel your fingers, your fingers are numb, numb. So to have no feeling is to be numb. Good, okay. Okay, so when an R appears before an L, it depends on the word, but generally, if an R appears at the beginning of a word, or after a T, an F, or a TH, then we pronounce it. So, right, or tree, or three, or free. But if the R appears later on in the word or at the end of the word, we usually don't acknowledge it. So in the word girl, you'll notice I don't make an R sound at all. I make an uh vowel sound, uh. So I, R in this case means uh is pronounced. Girl, repeat that. Girl, look at my mouth. Uh, girl. And then the other word was whirl, which means to like, circle around, like the wind will whirl, or you'll have a whirlpool in the water where it circles. Whirl. And look how open everything is. My tongue stays down. Whirl. Whirl. Good, okay, I'm just going to have a look at some of your comments at this point so that we don't get too far behind. Um, just need to bring up the chat box, so just bear with me. Okay, so some of you are saying you can't hear, I'm not sure why because other people can hear. Um, 
Um, when you show your notes, we can't hear anything. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. I won't show the notes again. Probably something to do with that. All right. Thank you for letting me know. I won't show the notes again. Ah, it's so hard to get in control of all the technical knowledge. I've never done live broadcasting before. I've only just come to it recently. So I'm still learning how to use the software. Okay, sorry about that. Let's see what else you guys are saying. Um, okay. Oh, some good suggestions here. So Maggie Wang has asked, how do you pronounce reservoir? Reservoir. Reservoir. Reservoir, which is a pool of water. Or maybe... It Maybe it's not just, it's a storage. It's a storage for, usually for water. So you'd have a reservoir in your coffee machine. Um, so it's a storage for water normally. Um, okay, so Bob, you've asked a, um, you've asked which sentence is correct. I have been in Italy or I have been to Italy. You'd say I've been to Italy, but this session is for pronunciation questions only, really. So let's try and keep it to that. Um, Elena is asking, how do you pronounce the word though? Though. T-H-O-U-G-H. Though. Though. So whenever we have a T-H, make sure that tongue is between the teeth. Th though. And it's like a W at the end. Okay. Oh, okay. So Philippa said, what is the difference between three, tree, and I'm free? It's the difference. You've got a TH for the number three, three. Then you go into the woods and you'll find lots of trees. That's not a TH, that's a T with the tongue tip on the roof of the mouth, T, T, tree, tree. And then we have the F for free, which means we, we put the bottom lip on the top teeth, F, free, free. Okay? Hey, it's me, Rule has asked, what time is it here in the UK? At the moment, it is nearly quarter to one. So it's 12.42, midday, which makes it close to quarter to one. Hello in Birmingham. Hello in Malaysia. In Malaysia, it's late, it's 8.30 in the evening. Okay, do we have any more pronunciation questions? Could you tell me the difference between the sounds at the beginning of these words? About and up. About, up. So in about, we have a schwa sound, which is just uh, uh. And this is the most common sound in the English language. Very relaxed, nothing happens. Uh, uh. And the schwa is interesting because the schwa will take over vowel sounds if the vowel is on a weak syllable. But don't get bogged down with rules. Rules, I don't think, always help. So when you have a word beginning with an A, individually you might say about, ah, about. But when you put it in a sentence, ah, that part of the word becomes weak and turns into a schwa. What's it all about? We'd say, what's it all about? Rather than, what's it all about? It would sound unusual. What's it all about? So we relax it. What's it all, uh, what's it all uh, about? I hope that makes sense. So about is schwa, about about and up 
up is this lovely little short vowel sound, uh, uh. It's not, it's not as far forward as an ah, more relaxed, uh. We'd say up, above, love, up, 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 up. I hope that helps. Okay. Let me see, what else do we have? Okay, so Saka was asking, what do I mean when I say phobia? Um, phobia is to have a fear of. Some people have a phobia of heights, which is the same as a fear of heights. Phobia equals fear. So I'm gonna try and make sure I don't miss anybody out. There's quite a few messages here now, so just bear with me. Hello, Mihail, nice of you to join me. Mihail was one of our giveaway winners and I will be doing a live call with him because he won a Skype call with me. I'll be doing a live call with him this week, which I'm very excited about. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Ronnie in Brazil. Hi. Um, lots of you are asking me for suggestions on books, good books for learning. Um, you guys are probably the best people to ask. So you guys are the learners. So if anybody knows of good English books for learning, then put it in the comments box, share it with everybody. What's the difference between life and lifetime and how do we use them? Hmm. I'm going to write that one down and maybe cover that in one of the other live lessons because that's not strictly pronunciation. Okay, so who's asked me that one? That was um, Mar Marconio? Mar Marconio? Marconi? Marconi. Marconi. Um, Marconi, I will cover that in one of the other sessions this week. All right. Probably Wednesday. The Wednesday session will be at three o'clock, by the way, guys. And if you're here and you enjoy these sessions, please, just because you're all awesome and we're all awesome together, just click the like button. Let YouTube know that you're enjoying these sessions and tell YouTube that they should help me to help you. So just click that like button right now because you're all awesome. Uh, la, 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 la. So give me some suggestions, guys. What do you want to hear me say? Okay, so Thomas has said he doesn't like the words sixth and eight. I'm not surprised that you don't like the word sixth. So if something is number six in the line, it is the sixth. And this is a difficult word even for us natives because we have a big movement of the tongue. We first have sick, and that's the K, sick, s, and then we have this S, and to a TH, six. It's three big movements for the tongue. The back of the tongue, the front of the tongue, then the tongue through the teeth. Sick, six, six. It's difficult, so let's do it together. So do for me a K, k do for me an S, s, and do for me a TH. And again, all three together. Sick, s, sick, s, six, six. <laughs> and then you just have to smooth the sound together. That is a tough one for everybody, I promise you. The other word, uh, the number eight, that's quite easy. A, it's a diphthong. A, A, T. And you just finish it with a plosive T. Eight, eight. Which is exactly the same as the verb in the past to have eaten. So I ate an apple yesterday. I ate an apple yesterday. Or I ate eight apples. I ate eight apples. Uh, 
Okay, so Estella is asking, is chores the only word with CH that you pronounce differently from other CH words such as choir and chemistry? No. So this the CH, sometimes we pronounce it as ch, ch, like in the word chore, which means um, a job that you don't want to do, like the washing up is a chore, for me anyway, and cleaning is a chore. Um, we also have the word church and charge and choice or choose. Which one do you want? Make a choice. I choose this one. Um, ch uh, chow. <laughs> no, that's not ch. <laughs> that's another language. Ignore that one. Um, what do we have? Ch 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 chair. I sit on a chair. So there are lots of words with ch that we pronounce ch. Sometimes it comes at the end of a word like which. Which one should I choose? Um, but then sometimes ch is pronounced k, like a k. For example, in the words choir, which is a group of singers together, choir, and chemistry. Chemistry. Okay, Ahmed has asked, how do you pronounce suggestions and suggestion? Suggestions? Suggestion. There we go. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, so um, Yuya has asked, how do you pronounce ordinary? Ordinary. Ordinary. Although, hang on. There is a diff. So in the UK, we have a problem with. Um, we have a problem with American English pronunciation filtering in to our everyday speech. So a lot of English speakers now naturally adopt American pronunciations. For example, the word either, either. Um, Americans say either, either, but a lot of English people wouldn't know which one is the British English version. A lot of English people use both, I'll say. Um, I don't mind either. The same with neither. Neither. I don't want neither. I don't do, I don't do it neither. Americans say neither. Um, and a lot of English people say neither as well. And that's because we watch a lot of American television and American films. Or I'm just trying to find this for you. Ordin ordinary. Okay. Ordinary. Oh, I've got no sound on it. I need to put my earphones back in. Ordinary. So, ordin. Ordinary. Ordinary. Very interesting question. You also asked how the word rarely. That's a good one. We have the rarely go out with my friends because I'm too busy. I rarely go out with my friends. Ordinary. 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 Okay, so the American version of the word ordinary is how I just said it. Ordinary. 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 And the British English version is ordinary. 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 <gasps> it's so confusing, isn't it? Ordinary. 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 Hmm. Okay, good question. Thank you for that. Okay, um, Hippolyto has asked for the words stare, that you climb up the stairs, and to stare, to look at something for a long period of time. And usually it's impolite to stare. My, pet, my, mom, my, my mother always used to say to me, don't stare, stop staring, it's rude to stare. And they're both the same. 
stare uh, or stairs and stare air again air stare um, Ronnie's asked why isn't there an s sound in aisle the English language is littered with silent letters um, I don't know why I just know that we don't pronounce it um, Um, so one of you has asked about prepositions. I do have a couple of lessons, maybe just one lesson um, in my video archive. So do go and check out some of the older videos, guys. So some of the things you're asking for, I've already covered in videos. Um, so Maggie's having a problem with the word found. It's lost and ah, I found my cup of tea. Thank goodness, found. Found. Ow. Imagine there's a W in the middle. Found. Found. And if you receive money, you receive funds. But you haven't put an S on the end. You just want the word fund. 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 So you've got ow in found and und in fund. Okay. Um, Francesca said, I can't understand accents because we're taught in school RP, um, but how can I overcome this problem? Well, once you understand English, standard English, to a good level, then you need to start listening to people with regional accents um, by listening to podcasts or radio programs, listening to, um, well, watching any English language films, most English language films will have all sorts of different characters in using different accents. So that's a good way to get used to hearing accents. I also have an accent discovery series, which I will be adding to over, over the year. So go and check out those videos. That will give you an idea of what the difference is between different accents. Um... By the way, guys, if you're not a subscriber, then please do click the subscribe button and the, the bell notification next to the subscribe button. This will let you know every time I release a new lesson and every time I'm live so that you don't miss future lessons. Um, okay, I'm going to finish off some of the ones that I was previously asked. So I was asked previously the difference between the word course, so to do an English course, and the word curse. A curse is, it's, it's like what a, a witch would put a curse on you. Or if bad things happen to you, you might think that the supernatural has, um, has, has made you likely to have bad luck or made bad things happen to you. So a curse. So you have a course, you do a course. Um, we feel like we're cursed. And then if something is rough to touch, um, like the wall isn't rough, but if something is, is rough, you could say it's coarse. If it's not smooth, it's coarse. Exactly the same pronunciation as English coarse. Rough, coarse, ow. And English coarse, coarse, coarse. And then I'm cursed, cursed. I'm just going to double check the pronunciation for secretary. So, the word secretary. Secretary. The word secretary in British English is secretary. Secretary. That's someone who answers the phone in a company, the person who greets guests at the door is the secretary who um, makes bookings and um, organizes meetings, the secretary. American English, which we use a lot in the UK, Americans say secretary, which we also say in the UK. So either pronunciation is fine. Secretary, British, secretary, American. So confusing. I was also asked, what is the difference between bear, a grizzly bear, air, 
That same diphthong keeps coming up. Air, bear. Beard, to have hair on your face would be a beard. So we have bear, Arr. beard, eared, eared, beard, and tweet, 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 bird. <laughs> Do you like my bird impression? Tweet, 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 bird. One long er uh, vowel, bird. So air, er, bear, eared, beard. Okay? Good. I was also asked, what is the difference between can, I can do something, I can speak English, a, ah, short vowel, can, and then I can't, completely different vowel, ah, open, long, ah, vowel. So just say this for me now, can, a, ah, can. And then try the long vowel, ah, and say, can't. Good. I can. I can't. I can. I can't. You can. If we are cow, there's another word I was asked. Ow. Ow. Sound. Count. Count. So I can count, I can't count. Good. And the last one I was asked was, what is the difference between thought? <gasps> I thought you were coming tomorrow. I thought. Thought. Long vowel, or. Lots of people thought. And what I'm doing, taught. I taught a lesson yesterday. I taught earlier this morning. Taught, same vowel, or, or. So I thought, taught. I thought I taught you yesterday. I thought I taught you a lesson. Then it is tough. It has um, a similar sort of spelling. T-O-U-G-H. Tough. English is tough, tough. Okay, so that's thought, taught, and tough. Mm. Oh, Francesca, you're writing in. Writing in Italian. And I can't and I'm afraid. Um, Ahmed said, how can I pronounce the TH without showing my tongue? It's really feels very weird to stick your tongue. Thank you. Or the. If you're used to saying de fic fief, everybody feels the same way. Everybody who does, but you have to get pronounce English properly. Have to get used to it. First, you have to speak slowly so your tongue gets used to this. So you might feel weird and you might not like it, but if you want to speak proper, slow down and learn the. La 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 la. They can't read it. Um, someone's said accent. 
I don't I don't do full RP because it sounds very very posh <laughs> and we don't want to I have another YouTube channel called Anna's Big Adventure the links are in the description any of those things feel free to go over and check those description box all the links are there um and or or order order if you have an e r at the end of a word as a schwa a uh. order um Uh, male is American English. Um, Didrick's asked, is mall American English? Yes, it is. So in, in the UK, we have a... This is what you're talking about, that's right. In the UK, we have a shopping centre. Um, and in America, they have a shopping... And we never say it either. Uh, George has asked... For the Okay, I want you to do this with me now.